We're going to start out uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim Bourne, 100 years ago, that got that resolution passed. <laughs> so Started I'm going to turn off my phone so it doesn't ring. Uh, and if you could all do the same, and then we will start with public input. Three minutes per individual, anybody who would like to speak. And we do have some people showing up by uh, by audio, audio visual, and so we certainly will invite them to speak as well. But let's start with the folks who are here. Would anybody like to speak? No way to speak. Okay. Uh, my name is Bruce Becker, and I own Maryland. Hi, Bruce. And Joel. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I represent the Sheboygan area. Uh, I'm sorry. I think it's school district. Sheboygan County Pickleball Club. We have 277 members. Uh, right now, we play in the mornings, and we um, have no problems by rotating in and out. Because we're familiar with that, we've been doing this for over 10, 12 years already. Uh, but now with additional courts, a lot of people are new to the game and they're not familiar about rotation. And that's why we're suggesting having signs on the fence that would be like guidelines. And I, we mentioned something to Joe already, but he thought it'd be a good idea for me to come and uh, mention that to the committee. Uh, so that way, when you have residents, because city residents, uh, people traveling through all like to know what they're going to be doing. Uh, you know, not that they come to uh, the, the uh, courts at Kiwanis or six and they're all full. They don't know where to put their panels, do anything. But anyway, so we're trying to make it less confusing for everybody. And that's what we're suggesting. So we're working with Joel and we mentioned about different signs available. Uh, we gave him a suggestion. We had a uh, committee set up that they would try to find the best, the simplest, and the best sign that would make more sense for all courts, not just individually. Um, so that's what we came up with. Um, so hopefully that'll happen. And, and, and Bruce, this is public forum, so technically I just want to hear you speak and not go back and forth. Okay. I'm going to jump the gun a little bit okay. because I did see in our agenda some uh, some description and I is that the document and maybe somebody can share it with you and then when we get to that on the agenda you can just share a little more okay sure I, I do have the document in the car and I forgot to bring that along we, somebody I can give you mine or whatever okay. we can okay. make sure that you see what okay. we came up you'll with. see it up here and, and is that consistent yeah. with yeah. and I received that document oh, from that okay meeting. so and it I, is the same I may have I've never been to this committee so I may have jumped the gun no, nope, well, you didn't. Just fine. Just fine. Just fine. Nope, fine. Bruce, fine. And we appreciate you, you coming. Okay. I jumped the gun, actually. Okay. You were fine. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so, I'll no. sit down. And okay. okay. So, sounds great. Uh, anybody else? Public input? Anybody else who's here? Okay. And then if we want to see if somebody else on our video screen. Uh, take your mic off if you would like to speak, please. Or, or take your mute off, I guess, right? Does anybody else want to speak? And I'll give you one more shot. Uh, anybody else like to speak? Otherwise, we appreciate you uh, being here by video. Okay. Uh, next up is approval of the minutes from the June 4, 2024 meeting. So moved. Motion. Second. And a second. Any other discussion? Otherwise, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries for approval of the minutes. Um, item number six on the agenda is the suggested pickleball court rules and guidelines. See, you were really close. Bruce. Thank you. Um, so I think Joe's going to okay. Put this up uh, on on the board for us if we can. So it's already shown, so you would just be sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Oh. All right. Just give us a moment, please. 
There you go. And I think we're telling you that's for there. Page. It's after so this. That was page out. six. There we go. There we go. So, so I, everybody met Bruce. Thank you for speaking, Bruce. Um, <laughs> if you've driven by any of our pickleball courts lately, you'll see we, um, we could probably do no wrong by removing everything else out of the park and just putting pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the way to go. <laughs> so, um, but we have a great crew, um, Sheboygan County Pickleball uh, Group Association. Bruce has been a contact of mine for many, many years. Uh, he, him, him, and a, a few different people when we built the rebuilt the tennis courts at um, at the Land Park across from uh, the YMCA. They actually asked for and painted the pickleball court lines in. Yes. So that was right. um, so. I thank Bruce for, for being a contact for me. So they they came to me also and, and talked about signage, which I think it's a great thing. I don't need an approval or anything, but I thought it would be a great discussion point. I thought it's so well used. It's just something we should, as a, uh, a commission, should even just uh, recognize how well it's being received. Um, you'll see later on in my report that, you know, we have six new ones now in Qantas Park, four new ones at Veterans Park. And it's just uh, it's it's just cool to see that they're being used so much. So with all the usage, you know, they've been around and and they at different times of the day, um, a lot of their group likes to get together. Sometimes that's the same time as you know other people are just going out and wanting to play. So we got what we got going on is we got people that just want to go out maybe as friends and family and, and play. And all of a sudden they're running into, wow, it's it's busy and, and there's a system going on that they're not used to and maybe really don't even want to be part of. And so we, we think it's going to probably be a good thing to maybe get some signage. Now, these are suggestive. It's kind of etiquette. It's if the place is busy, you know, this is kind of what's going on type of thing. So the first you know, time um, on our rule boards, it's going to be the time of the our parks. You know when the park is open basically that'll say and that's what you normally see no glass chairs things like that blades that's good it's the the be considerate and share court time uh, that we want to discuss today um guidelines so when it's that busy their suggestion and how they how they do it when it's every court's being filled is you play one game to 11 you win by one and you ro rotate the whole the whole all both teams rotate out, kind of like when you used to play pool. If you used to play pool, you put your quarter up, you're next in line, you put your paddle up. So we'd be working with them to, to figure out that system and get some of those, whether we want to get the baskets or not, um, so they can put their paddles in the row and rotate in, rotate out. Um, place paddle in the right for designated area, it keeps going down as people go in. Um, when the courts are full, of course, we don't want people just sitting there practicing, things like that. Um, so it's it's a way of kind of getting, making other people understand what's going on when the courts are full. Um, if they're not full, you know, don't have to worry about it type of thing. And they, you know, and, and it depends, you know, through talking with them how busy it is, you know, they might, okay, it's not as busy. Maybe uh, one one team rotates out and one team stays in and they, Sometimes they'll do winners, whatever. They'll do different things, but this is the easiest way to talking with Bruce and them that kind of, without getting carried away on different ways of doing it, this is just the easiest way to, to put it down on a, on a suggested rule board. And, I, and again, my, you know, my understanding then, of course, is that eliminates conflict Right. Uh, which is the primary thing yeah. here is let's right. uh, eliminate conflict between strangers on the pickleball court and uh, obviously people who are there can decide to, to, to vary from that. But uh, and, and thank you, Joe, for mentioning the quarter on the pool table because I was going to say it, so I didn't have to. Uh, I appreciate <laughs> you saying it. Uh, but uh, Bruce, is this consistent with what you're recommending? Yes, uh, what we did, we had a uh, advisory committee set up. Yes. And they could go, because we saw a whole bunch of signs. They were from private clubs, from public courts, and 
basically what they did, they took pieces of bits from yeah. all over the place and tried to come up with a, a, simple, a simple, but yet uh, something that'll work for the city. And that's basically what we came up with. Yeah. Okay. And then the signs are going to come, we're going to take your... We'll do all that in-house. So we're going to make the signs in-house and then put them on the courts. Yep. Right. I do have a Go ahead. question, uh, Joe and uh, Bruce. Um, I wasn't... Uh, is drilling, is that a, a pickleball ball? We might think of a different way of uh, well, stating that. I was thinking no, you know, no uh, practice play. Practice play. Because yeah. um, initially I looked at that drilling. What do they mean by drilling? Really I'm drilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we don't, we don't want to be drilling in the court at all. <laughs> uh, and I, I figured it was probably practice right. play. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe say. We'd probably say practice. Yeah. Pra practice yeah, exactly. play might be a little better. Yeah. And there were sort of certain signs that said warm up time limited to five minutes. Oh, so yes. in other words, when you first get on the court, you're not you have a couple nice of fresh, you have yeah. a couple of hits, and then you get back to the game. You don't want to go into that game cold. <laughs> <laughs> you only have 11 points to win, right? Yeah. That's Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's Any good. other questions, comments from commissioners? Go ahead. So is this like, uh, like since you've been all around the county, is similar what they have, like in Falls and Plymouth, something similar to this? Or well, what, this... what it is, because of our group, uh, being 277 members, that we normally play in the mornings, mm -hmm. and we normally don't get too much involved with the city residents or anything, and that's why we already know the rotation, either in by twos or fours, whatever. So we're very accustomed to doing that. I've, I've played for 10 years already other people for 12 or 13 and so that's not where the issue is the issue would be for the city residents and those coming through yeah because anytime you go to a new court you always like to know what your responsibility is in other words where do you put your paddles um what's proper do you wait till two to four players go in that's what we're trying to accomplish to make it as simple as possible so if you have a family, say for, you have a mother and a father, and they have two children that come in, and they just want to have fun. So if all four courts or six courts are being used and nobody waiting, there's no issue. They can do whatever they want. But as soon as you have people waiting, that's what we wanted to accomplish with the signs, to make sure that there was no conflict. You know, because Obviously, they're not going to be like we talked about before with uh, pickleball police. I don't think there is such a thing. <laughs> so, we, I don't right. think so. Yeah. 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 This way, there'll be a pickleball division. Yeah. 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 Alleviate any of the problems that might yeah. come up. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to accomplish with this. Okay. And it's basically for, especially those who get off of work at three or four and they kind of want to start playing. And all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of people there. And they just want to make sure we have this rotation going so we don't have any hard feelings. And, yeah. and we're trying to, you know, pickleball is supposed to be fun and yeah. it's supposed to be safe. And it's supposed to be for the whole family. And that's what we want it to be. Okay. Um, just, yeah. So how do you address the situation if you have a, a family, you know, teaching their young children how to play? Well, and it, I mean, either you just figure out what's uh, appropriate time for a match and then ask them to move on. Well, that's why the sign will represent what they should do. Oh, well, that's the saying they can't even, they can't do practice play. Well, no, this is, for the family, it's not considered practice. It's considered a game. A game, yeah. okay. So okay. they would play up to 11, mm -hmm. they okay. play one, okay. and then they would exit, and then the next four would come Perfect. in. Perfect, okay. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, we're not saying it's a warm-up, because families play differently than they do somebody who's at a higher skill level or something like that. I understand. Um, okay. So either way, they would play with the four up to 11 and then out, and then the next four would come in. And that's, that's why you get this rotation going, and that would be nice. Especially on weekends when it's busy, uh, evenings when people are off work, they want to play, and they don't want to stand there waiting and waiting and waiting. Years ago, if somebody had a tennis court, they could hold on to that tennis court for a long time, yeah. and then nobody else could play. Well, now tennis is kind of going by the wayside. I mean, there's still play, people that play, uh, but not as much as pickleball. And uh, so it's nice that the city is, is making pickleball courts like a veterans at Qantas and the last couple of years at uh, Balrith. Mm -hmm. So that's very nice. Um, as long as you're here, Bruce, and I had yeah. mentioned some time ago that or recently that it would be good to have somebody 
representative from the pickleballers to just chat with us. What's your feeling for how we're moving in adding pickleball courts? Does it seem like it's too slow, reasonable, or too fast? <laughs> You're well, probably not going to say too fast. No, <laughs> I just go <guess>, well. <laughs> originally, uh, when Joe and I have a talk, uh, my wife and I had gone to Appleton, and there was a court up there. It was Mary uh, Mary Beth Ninehausen, and she gave the city five hundred thousand dollars to make eight pickleball courts. And I took photos, photographs of that, with all the safety features and everything. Brought them back, showed Joe. And he said, well, we plan on eight courts, but with the safety features, we have to cut back for pricing. Yeah. And I, we understood that. But at least we have the safety features like hook, uh, netting in between so the balls don't go back right. and forth, a gate that goes from, from the two courts goes to one area so you don't cross behind each other. Yeah. So those are all safety features. So those are nice. But uh, I think what you're going to find is that you could keep adding these all the time and they're going to be used. Uh, right now, Veterans Park is hard to get to because of all the construction going on. Yeah. Uh, but once that opens up, that uh, I'm sure you're going to see a lot more usage over there. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the city is doing a very good job. Okay. And um, I think that originally when they started with Walworth, we were real happy to see the three designated courts there. They had allowed uh, two of the tennis courts to stay with the wall lines on. So we would actually have five courts at one time. But as people get older, they don't want to chase the balls too far. You know, they would rather have the courts smaller like they do when they're designated. Right. And the tennis courts are nice, excuse me, but then you have to trade, you know, chase the balls all over the place. So yeah, it's, it's nice to see more of the designated pickleball courts, but I think the city's doing a good job. Anybody, any pickleballers would say we need more, mm -hmm. you know, that's just normal. But uh, yeah, I think they're doing a good job. Okay, and that's what I wanted to hear yeah. because my sense is that on balance, because this, because as a sport it's moving fast, right, right, the rapid speed, frankly, I, right. it feels to me like we're doing a good job. I yeah. Just yeah, want that confirmation. And okay, and another nice, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say what's nice about Quas is that they left room that you can always add on. Yeah, you know, which yeah. is really nice because you have the initial startup of six courts and go to eight, 10 or whatever, because that's a nice locale. Um, something to keep in mind. A great comment that they threw out was maybe listing at each court of what we have. Yeah. So if I really just want to play with my family, um, I'm thinking now, you know, the QR code, go to that on the sign, and it basically says we're all the, the tennis courts with markings of pickleball courts. I really want to go play with my family. That might be the place to go, go to Roosevelt, you know. Mm -hmm. But you can do the QR code and see where all the, the courts are in, in the city. And, and can you do that on, on we, the site itself? We can then? do that, yep. Because that would be yeah. great. Started and and it's obviously going to have a dating on it, so it's going to be obsolete at some point. That's right. why the QR code, would we could take yeah. that off and put a new one on when we have Perfect. things. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And that would be very helpful because most people have cell phones and they yeah, can just do the QR code. Yeah, so if they get there and it's busy, you find out right. where else you can right. go. Where you go. And like, and I think Joel brought up a good point too. If you have a family that wants to practice and they don't, they feel a little intimidated with everybody at a higher level, you yeah. can find out where you can go. Like say, like you mentioned, Deland, Roosevelt, wherever, and they'll feel more comfortable. We actually, in our club, we decided that after we give free lessons, if they're not ready for open play, open play means everybody plays with everybody. Um, there's a thing called pickleball light. So it's intended for people who are not ready for the aggressive game of open play, and they just enjoy the sport. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to accommodate as many people as possible. Okay. So, sounds good, Bruce. I don't want to cut you off. No, I'm sorry. But no, no, no. I appreciate it. Uh, I asked the question. I just I want to make sure we keep our meeting moving along, yeah. unless there's anything else no. on this. And Joe, you said you don't need approval. Just want to discuss. Is this an official document that was sent to you or not? No, this uh, was given to me when we okay. when we met. Yeah, so we don't have to file. No. Don't don't have to approve it. You're just going to take care of it. Sounds great, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much okay. for thank being you. here. The next item on the agenda is the uh, uh, item number seven: Deland Park Harbor Center Marina Master Plan Plan Discussion.
And I didn't. Um, I don't think we I have don't, any I don't think there's any document no. on the agenda. Uh, I think this report's going to come up as a item, Separate uh, item. Uh, 12, and it's uh, attachment 12 on the agenda. So two separate? Uh, no, that's attached to the prior minutes. Yeah, this um, isn't. Yeah, this is. That's the okay, June one that was attached as a, a document okay. to the prior minutes. So I was just going to stay along with the agenda unless somebody feels differently, and and then uh, again the Deland Park Harbor Center Marina Master Plan discussion. So this is the marina. And Deland Park yeah. discussion. Joe, so we'll get to this later. This so he's talking group. about the master plan. We're just talking about the master plan. Yes. I'm yeah. sorry, Smith Group. Yeah. I'm new here. Any updates? <laughs> uh, any updates to present from on the Smith Group master plan, or just a quick reminder of where they are in process? Yes. I got a nice, short, and sweet um, um, comment from Marie, who's putting this on. Um, yeah, and I just forgot all about it. I, I thought it was going to be part of the report. But basically, um, and, and, um, they're just, and they wrapped up their, 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 the last procedure, and they're going through what um, all the comments that came through, and, and they'll basically be talking with the city shortly again. And yeah, I think so, the comments sorry, closed on that. August 1 yeah. for the ability to comment uh, after the charrette process, and then I think there, uh, so Smith Group is working on designs before it comes back for next presentation. Right. Yeah, that was very, that's very simple. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see if anybody else had anything on that agenda item, then let's move to Fountain Park. Agenda item number eight. So, and this is just a review of, of what the, um, uh, architecture did, and, and I hope everybody maybe took the chance to look at it. A lot of good information in there. Um, you know, they basically just went through the community meeting, uh, everything that was talked about. Um, so, um, I'm not. I don't. It's a huge document. Don't want to go through things. Maybe I'll, I'll just touch on a, a few things. Um, Get to the good, the good stuff, the pictures, um, <laughs> you know. So you can you can see in here it's come some of the discussion items, uh, written comments. So yeah, just take your time to look at that. Um, these are all just written word for word. I went through this, um, and then they went through all the the image boards that we're gonna go through uh, just really quickly. But um, I've got them marked out kind of. So. Um, so they had these set up and, and wanted people to basically, hey, what, what do you like? What don't you like? And, uh, first of all, there was 75 people that were part of the meeting, several people here from there. Um, so it was a very good showing in Qantas uh, Fieldhouse. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. But uh, so like, I'm just going to take my... the comments that were and I wasn't at that meeting but the comments I, it just looks like the participants were very engaged in this process yeah no it, it was a two-hour meeting lots of back and forth um, architecture uh, Blake did a great job um, speaking to it um, so yeah it was it was a great meeting people were very impressed with it but so they had these boards several boards all over the place so I'm just going to kind of pick up the, the big ones um, that were, were looked at. Uh, people really liked uh, the number one here was like a, this is a flexible space, a beer garden setting type social space. Um, and some tying ones were, were the, the, the three across the board on top that liked the social space, pedestrian promenade, the beer garden slash vendor space. So, so those are some of the areas that they liked for the flexible space. So market space. Um, they really like the street closure type area, the, like the integrated um, shade marketing seating. And uh, the third one they liked was the covered, uh, the covered market area. Okay. New fountain area. Yeah. 
Peter, want to guess which one was the big yeah, winner? I, I was actually right really center. surprised. Yeah, he really liked yeah. that. These two. Yeah. And that was the big yes. one. And I was very surprised I, too. I, I was too. By the way, Joe's teasing me because that was my favorite <laughs> and I shot during our uh, stakeholder meeting. I sent classic, that out and showed ball. it. And I thought, oh, that's just my quirkiness. Um, but it seemed like that was actually a lot of people came around. I think a lot of people historic. Like to see a I classic think phone. That's classic and the rest are trendy. Yeah. I like that. I'm, I'm trendy. <laughs> but no, yes, you're absolutely right. So those were the, the top two. They were pretty much the, the pick. Interactive water features, the next one. So they really liked, uh, for number one, they liked this one. Uh, spray jet water tunnel, in Toronto. And these two got the same amount of bolts. It's like a, like a, a fog um, water distributing. Odd play and um, water pavilion. So both, both kind of neat. Supporting building. Uh, they really, it's always been a favorite of mine. The market linear shade structure. Kind of looks like a train station to me. I really like that one. You, you do see those in, in several market areas. Um, and then they like the building with patio extension. Lighting, uh, number one was just uh, uh, the lighting, outside lighting like this. They did like the water play, integrated water play, and then they like the art light. Furnishings, um, no, number one was just landscape with seating in the right corner. They like the, with uh, we like our rocks around here. We do like the rocks around here for some reason. And then, uh, like, uh, sunken in seating. And I like the fire pit part. Non-traditional play. Um, just sculpture garden. Big into art in the city. So I'm working with uh, Kohler Art. Um, organic form play. That's pretty cool. And then playable art. That's number three. That's really cool. Ice skating ribbons has some good comments about the ice skating ribbons. Whether you know if we do it here, and they'd like to rather they'd rather the comments that night were would rather see it here than in the land park. So that was one com a few comments that were made like that. But we should be watching what we're doing in both areas. Was comments also, but they really liked the uh, in Two Rivers, Central Park Two Rivers. If you ever get there, check it out. Um, Tim was actually skating there last year, checking it out with his his boy, and then they like the kind of like the outdoor fire pit along with that. So um, those are some of the, the items that they really like. The then they show three concepts of the whole park overall, kind of like a bubble diagram. So this was number one, and uh, let's see that received twenty people liking this one. So the Interior of the circle, the ring. Uh, and number two was the, what went all the way down to five was the triangle. The next one. Just kind of let you look at it if, in case you haven't seen it first yet. And then, and uh, then four for the, the next one. I think some of the the, the the big likes were getting the fountain and restrooms more in the middle of the area. Um, I think what is very questionable is the current um, band shell. We got a lot of we got people that have um, you know been a part of that, part of the Music Wall of Fame and whatnot. would hate to see that go, but the things that we have going on is we have this band shell, restrooms definitely needing some work, um, and we have City Green. So we have two, two music venues 
and in my opinion, not being used to their fullest, either one, even if you put the usage together. So I think there's some decisions that need to be made there is, is during this process is, you know, what, what's the future of that area that, so, but other than that, uh, um, some very good comments. We've got a meet, meet, I'll finish this up. We've got a meeting coming up. Um, Shortly, um, hopefully even this Friday, if I can get everybody together for next steps and, and discussing all this with um, city staff, and then there will be another community meeting. Thank you, Joe. One of the things, just uh, for clarification, I know it keeps popping up, but um, even in, in all of the plans that Blake suggested, and as I recall, Blake of Parkitecture is a former rock and roll musician in his original life. And so he wants to make sure there is music space in Fountain Park. So it's just a different style of music yeah. space in Fountain Park. And I, I think he really emphasized that, that it's not a matter of, of eliminate the band shell and have nothing, but rather uh, like that event space circled on that bubble diagram, I think Blake said that you know that would be the the music place. And I my recollection is that there wasn't opposition from the pops band to these concepts and the idea of using city green. Um, unless not 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 at the meeting. Um, since then, there's been some oppositions brought to the, the mayor's office. Okay. And I said, Mayor, we we really need that documentation of comments like that so yeah. yeah we can make that part of the, the, the and is that coming from not to get too specific is that coming from the pops band officially <sighs> no I, I, I wouldn't say official because like, again individuals we could, because we could do a directed follow-up with those folks from the officials from the pops band because Dean am I correct that they were there they I, seem I to think be there were some people there that were there. They seem to be open to they seem to be open, open to using city green, even yeah. if the city was open. You know, so so again, just to appease you know, and they they were definitely a group we reached out yeah, to and to appease key yeah. stakeholders, yeah. maybe just a second sure. a second uh, check in with them might be yeah. helpful to help move them in along in support of this. Okay. Uh, appreciate that update, great update, uh, great detail. And again, I think architecture was just so impressive. I, I I can't. Yeah, I know you have worked with them before and recommend them. And I I've not been through a type of session with with folks who were just so interactive and engaging with the public. Um, I would conclude. I concur. I mean, that was a, probably one of the best meetings I've ever been at. Actually, was I mean, everyone there was. Um, Polite and you know all, all the participants, all the people that came to it. I, I, I was just, I was very impressed. And uh, Joe had mentioned it, but when I read through all of the comments, uh, again, I think we have to be very careful with uh, with D Land Park being looked at that we're not duplicating some of those items because, uh, and I, since they're two different planning groups and two different locations, we have to be very careful. With, uh, Who's going to take responsibility for that? Is that, yeah, is that us? Yeah, or is that... No, I would think that's our department. Okay. Okay. Me and Travis working with, you know. You, uh, so you're making sure we don't have two ice ribbons well, and, and two big stages and two big food truck park zero. areas? Or... <laughs> that's, that's the thing that we need to look at. I, you know, we got to let these kind of be individuals and then, you know, as decisions are made, look at them as a whole, too. Okay. Yeah. I think there were great comments that, and I'll, I'll, I'll be frank, I, I don't know that an ice ribbon would work in the land park. Blowing sand, very, very cold and blowing in the winter. I think, you know, people are correct. Even at this meeting, they're saying, well, this seems like a much better place. But those those are comments that we'll, we'll talk about. Okay. You guys will take care of it for us then. Good. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Rebecca? Yeah, can I ask a quick question? One thing I was of course. Gonna, yeah, just curious about with all of these plannings, you know, exciting, fun, moving parts and shelters and things like that. But and maybe Joe, you could answer this. I couldn't make all the meetings. God, there's a lot of meetings. Um, was there any discussion though about who is in charge of promoting these sites, these facilities, 
renting them out, um, you know, check, you know, I feel like the city would need to do like a marketing program for some of these spaces to make sure that they're used. If there's event space, marketplace spaces, I just wasn't clear on who was in charge of that. So yeah, I can speak to that, uh, Rebecca. Um, you know, there's a lot of cities, Oshkosh, um, Waukesha, um, um, that, too many to name, Green Bay, they do go out, they do promote these things, they do have people that are specific to special event coordination. Um, you know, we do not have that staff. Uh, we do take the, the, the special events in here, but marketing, that's, that's not something that's been happening. So yes, to, to fill that time and, and fill that, those space events, that's, it's going to take more than the, the staff that we have at this point. Um, no, I, I agree with that, Joe. I just hope it's something the city is thinking about. Like if you build it, will they come? I mean, the county kind of has a similar issue. We have the new education facility out at the marsh and it's not, the rentals aren't, flying off the shelves, let's say like we thought they would be, but we don't really have house, you know, we don't have a marketing plan or a thing to sort of get that up and going. So if you have this be these beautiful new options, how does the community know how they're gonna, and we don't have to answer this tonight, right. just throwing it out there. Um, because obviously why wasn't Fountain Park being utilized before is kind of the original question. So just something to think about. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for raising that, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Well, just, I just made a note to make sure we keep that uh, on target as one of the issues. Okay, if nothing else on Fountain Park, then let's move on to item number nine. And there are not any attachments with this fostering canoe, kayak, and stand up paddle board usage at the waterfront. Yeah, oh, uh, let's see, where do I go to that? Right here? I don't think there were any attachments on this one. No, no, I'm just going to. Okay, oh, perfect. So, a little things that we have done since our last meeting. Um, just a couple, couple items. So, what I've done uh, to this point is I've reached out to Rent Fun, which is popping up in quite a few different places, and and what they do is have an automatic um, uh, rental system, much like the the scooters in town. You go up with your phone and you pay for it, and you get to use it. Um, you can go to a, um, a, a cage and you, they start in um, amounts of four. Uh, we could have this down at Qantas Park. We could have this down along the river. And with, again, you set up an account real quick, you, you pay and you take out the kayak and, and a life jacket and you have your hour of fun. If that's how much you want to do for roughly $25, you want to rent it two hours, whatnot. You put it back and you're good to go, you know. Um, that's been happening. Oshkosh has one. Green Bay is popping up all along the Fox Valley River. Um, the unfortunate part is, is it, 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 there is an investment. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's going, been going up yearly. So in Oshkosh started in 2002, uh, so 22, 23. They started in 23. And it was sixteen thousand, and for next year it's already twenty thousand. So the twenty one time twenty thousand dollars startup fee. We wanted to do this next year, and then half the proceeds gross um, gross revenue goes back to the city. So and the nice thing now then is the rest of it's on them. Okay, they take care of it. They inventory. They repair. They do everything else. We just need to provide the space, the $20,000 up front free. We get half the income and it's like a five year term, but you can always keep updating that agreement with no more up, up, up front fee cost. So it's a pretty, pretty big. Um, and, and as I said, like, uh, you know, 2016, just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is, because of the need and because of the want and and so they're able to do it i guess they're able to do it so we could see if there's any other ones out there but it's a one-time fee if we could get that through visit sheboygan a grant or if we could get that through a grant or something like that um 
you can always add to it. You can do it. You could have an eight, eight compartment one, but then you'd need another twenty thousand dollars. So, um, so that's how that works, and it's not a bad idea. You don't have to have someone there all the time than renting to it. The other part of this, the second part of this, was um, along the Sheboygan River. Uh, Nick has a great map um, down in his office, but um, we picked out a few areas. Um, number one, this is kind of being looked at in the, the Smith Group as a kind of a place. This is really kind of would not take much to turn this platform. Too bad the, the letters are there. It's a pretty nice triangle uh, docking, and you could have another docking up to it where pretty easy access for a kayak to come up to. Um, so what we're purpose of this was when the, the group came to us last time is to look at where we could allow people to dock and then use our um, boardwalk areas for, for restaurants and 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 and, um, and and go to the go to the, the restaurants go to the stores that type of thing this area is all open pretty much it used to be there used to be at least four courtesy docks so that's still open that's easy to do uh, that would be just some signage so that's a great area where we could do it this area correct me if i'm wrong nick doesn't get used for anything doesn't get rented right and and this would be a by far a great place um this is right driftwoods right here a great place where we could allow kayakers and whatnot supporters and, and the, there is signage on that dock that it's courtesy dock courtesy dock and on that one yeah, yeah. on that one and there's uh and then uh, farther up river so there's lots, lots of good areas is that are docking. possibilities for docking and, and then we already have so we kind of have this in place and the request was places to put in and or get out of so they could be using the stores and whatnot along there. So we, we kind of have a really good start. We just kind of, I think, discuss it, put it together, see if there's rent fund, if we could, you know, find a, um, some investment money, maybe, maybe visit Sheboygan. They've supported a lot of first things, startup things. So, um, and let's not forget, there's already a canoe rental place right here through EOS, or if that's EOS still. But, so. so just a quick couple of quick uh, personal observations. So on Sunday, we had a group of about 20 from the Yacht Club go down the river starting at Susha's just to check out a few spots. Uh, and we actually did uh, have at least one beverage between us. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and it was, um, the, the other thing I would say is, Part of it is on-premise signage, but part of it is switching back to your QR code idea for pickleball courts or other things. It's really helpful, I think, to know where the stops are, you know, just like where else can I stop? But we did stop at places like Park and John's. We were going to stop at Driftwood, but I already knew about that dock and, and, and then a few other places. And um, we're on our way, I think, because we've got some dock areas, some ideas, and, and frankly, I, I think this is really doable. Uh, and then with some help from whether it's, you know, visit Sheboygan or the local restaurants or whatever else, it's in their interest to have a, a stopping point as well. So uh, I believe, Nick, you had talked with the uh, um, bid district coordinator um previously somebody from the uh, downtown business improvement district about uh some of the coordination with having stops along the way maybe uh, a couple months ago or something um but uh i'm a little nervous i've got to admit about the idea of having kayak canoe rentals so far downstream i really think the place for that is Qantas park I just uh, fear so much having somebody plug in their, you know, money, grab a kayak and say, oh, I'm sure I can do this. 
end, end up in the lake. End up in the lake, and mm. you know, I think Kiwanis Park is a far better place where people don't own their own equipment, so they're not, you know, so deep into it that they basically um, self-monitor. It, it's, there's so much risk with that lake. I, I don't know, Dean. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. I mean, you want it the lake like that. I mean, you know, it's once they get out into you know the, the river's pushing them, especially if you get in the wrong weather. The river's pushing them out, and they, they could be, you know. Terry, you're looking at me like you've got a comment on it. No, no. Nope. My only comment was, do we? You know, there is somebody that rents kayaks and stuff now. Yeah. Okay. Do we as a city want to be in competition with that by putting up a kiosk? That's a great reason, another great reason why to have it at Qantas and not here because because that's that's here someplace where that's happening. Yeah. I don't think in Qantas you would look at it as competition for each other. But will people walking up the boardwalk see that and see the uh, pontoon rentals are, are right there. And maybe we, we include that on yeah. the, yeah. And, and maybe we have yeah. the EOS uh, maybe put some of this stuff together, or maybe they help fund, you know, some of it and put their own sponsor endorsement of where they are and what they do and whatever. I, I just, I'm trying to find, find fund sources. And then uh, Joe, I also have another <laughs> uh um, company that does these like pop-up rental things, I'll send it to you so okay. that you've got another contact because $20,000 is a big amount of money. And Mr. Chair? Yeah, Rebecca. Hi, yep. Rebecca. I just want to point out that there was someone online here, uh, Laura, who said kayak docking uh, would be awesome on both sides. I'm assuming that's at the river. Uh, I, I just want to say too, though, that I agree with you. I, I am nervous about being really close to Lake Michigan. Um, I've had folks reach out to me in my email that, you know, more stuff kind of down by the beer garden, Joe. Uh, the, the issue is, you know, the water levels can change so much and trying to get in, in and out of a kayak right. with, with a dock can be, that's just something to think about. And so we don't, again, don't have to solve this tonight. I am thinking too, even if we could partner with, I know there's other places along the river that have installed like. Sheboygan Falls or whatever that have installed kayak, um, accessible kayak launches and stuff. And if, if maybe everyone pools their money, we could make it more of a destination paddle sports thing. And so if the Sheboygan River is being really fussy that day, maybe they could go somewhere else in the county or something. And but everyone gets a little piece of the pie. I think it's it's kind of exciting, but I do worry about Lake Michigan and at certain bends in that river. It, it can it can be get a little dicey. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, would we also would possibly maybe work with with since EOS is there already? They they already do it. Is it possible that maybe they would be interested in doing something similar to this instead of going so, to an outside company? Sounds great. I mean, that's my that's, thought. That's you another. Know, I mean, because they're here. They're you know they're they're a Sheboygan company. I would prefer that we work with them if possible. Sounds great. Joe, are you willing to go back and check the EOS as well? Yep. And right. then I'll send you another competitor as well for, for the idea. But I, unless unless the direction is otherwise, I, I would be hopeful that we would look more upstream towards Kiwanis uh, rather than downstream. I've, I've spent too much time on that water uh, and seen what the current and flow does, and it is powerful. And the wind. Uh, and the wind. <laughs> yeah. And this portion was just trying to pick the areas where people yeah. could get out and visit the store. And, yeah. and I was, by the way, pleased. Uh, I, I don't know if Laurel is still on with us, but I was also pleased that Smith Group did include something on Rotary uh, Riverview Park relating to a potential additional launch in some of their planning. And I think that's what Laurel was looking for or hopeful of. So. Uh, Anybody have anything else on this topic? On I, yeah, I just want to follow up. The reason we were looking at what did you call it? Rent fun is fun is, fun rent yeah or fun rent, rent fun maybe you're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> is EOS sold out at certain times? I mean, they don't have enough uh, 
kayaks to rent out that we're looking for another option or is it somebody wanting to rent outside of their hours when they're available to rent? I was, I was just thinking since we have such a nice launch at Kiwanis Park, we were, you know, we're to we were looking at there. offering okay. something there. And then, and I think it's right to talk to them first and see and what they give them first. Are. first yeah. Shot at, yeah. Okay. I would certainly support that. Okay. Okay. Great. Anything else? Otherwise, let's move on. Uh, item number 10 on the agenda, Volrath Park, uh, parking signage and new disc golf holes updates. So this is real quick, quick updates. We've got the, certainly the okay to um, put in um, those other two uh, baskets. Um, um, my, my park foreman is working closely with Dennis, um, doing some clearing, getting things ready for both um, Ballrath Park and, and JC Park for both areas for some new tee pads. Um, we're, we're, we're discussing and, and we're going to be looking into pricing for some new baskets. So I just wanted to give an update that along those lines, we're, we're moving right along. Um, I guess Dennis, um, want to hear from you a little bit with, with the food trucks kind of splitting. They split up. Yes, they split. I think there's more at Kiwanis than there is at Ballrath now. They've got it down to 10, 11 trucks the last probably two weeks now and it's actually uh, actually handleable now there's not as many trucks that don't take the space but i still believe that there should be a sign from that from 15 where that sign is just on that south side of the road to the end no park because it is a safety issue i mean i have people get hit all the time and why try to you know make more problems just eliminate the parking on that one section and it really would save a lot of problems I, I think then we we move forward discussing that with legal that even though some of these changes have made he really pushed that we try to do something more signage in the park cautionary things like that and, and try to stay away from the no parking but you know if that's still the issue maybe we should go i think it's again. still going to be an issue because instead of the food trucks parking there now there are people parking there now to get all the and they Park and they picnic right by their vehicles, which is right along the yeah. fairway. So we'll, we'll go back to talking to legal about the no parking signs for Monday. So yeah, but it has calmed down quite a lot. <laughs> we went down, I think it was last week, we went down to the food trucks at Kiwanis Park. There's probably twice as many people, and really? it didn't look like there was as many. And the, nice the bigger area, and the food and the beer garden. The beer garden opened up on Mondays since, since they were coming down there. So. That's my Wisconsin. So, so. Beer and eating and beer and boating and beer and driving. There's <laughs> one common denominator there or something. What is it? Okay, anything else on that? Otherwise, let's move on to item number 11, Indian Mound Improvement Discussion. Yeah, so I just wanted to give you an update that, you know, we work with Town & Country. Um, gardening club and they're a great group and um unfortunately indian mountain's been kind of getting left behind a little bit um it's it's uh if you've been there and i'm sure a lot of people have um we are planning on on, on re, re um aggregating the main walkway um, i'm hoping that's going to be this year uh, but down below um where the the wood footbridge is it's it's really rough and it's uh, we even closed it off for a while um well it still is um it's overgrown the walkway even though i think the walkways i mean really stood its test of time it's been um i think at least 20 20 plus years down there but it's time that that walkway gets um taken out and replaced um they they made the efforts of talking to me about it and um they they did get a quote from Lundmark um, uh, Landscaping. We're gonna have, have a sit down next week. Uh, they kind of threw out some initial costs to just replace, make better what we have down there. It's a little on, you know, it's 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 a bite. It's around 31,000. Um, so I've got to go from there and see what we can do possibly as um, some shared uh, work. Um, so, I just wanted everybody to know that that we're 
I want I want this group to know that it's 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 turned now into a high priority and, and we're looking at it and you know budgeted money is, is tough but um, you know we're going to do what we can to try to make Indian Mound uh, 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 spruce it up again. Okay, sounds good. Uh, item number twelve. Nick, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And sure. really appreciate your report that was uh, included with the agenda. Perfect. So uh, we'll dive right into the, the numbers. And uh, I do want to point out, uh, Mike, that I was thinking of you when I was writing this. So last year, <laughs> or excuse me, last time we were here, there were some questions as far as uh, the amounts, right? So F3, or excuse me, for the marina having... Uh, slip rentals that are exceeding F3. So the way that F3 did their uh, recording, I guess you could say, is different than the way that uh, the city is doing it. So ours are based off, uh, pretty much these guys will pay out for the whole season. So I think what you'll see in our next meeting, I think we're, excuse me, um, the city is the bottom one for August 21st, 2024. So we're just slightly above it. I think what you'll see on this next meeting is you'll see F3 surpass us as far as uh, slip revenue. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure I was clear there because I know I was a little mistaken last time in, in my answer for that. But. I just thought you were better at collecting up front. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, diving right in, we'll see, you know, certainly F3 with the, excuse me, previously last year, I should say, with the launch fee <coughs> surpassed. The one I was impressed with and for us, at least, was the transients uh, forty-seven thousand, and compared to the fifty-one thousand for F three for last year, which I thought was pretty good. You know, given we certainly have a lot of changes, and um, for me as a manager, and what my belief is is in regards to a marina and how it makes money, it's based on transients and uh, kind of the, the fuel sales for gas and diesel, and <clears throat> you know. Uh, we, we definitely had a slow start, which I noted here as far as the marketing and the sales uh, with our gas. I think it was probably the first month or month and a half or so. I think it rained every single weekend, and it was certainly frustrating. Um, not sure how much of an impact that will have for next year. I know it's still cold, but, um, you know, there's still uh, potentially lost revenue as far as that. But, you know, we turned the corner. It got nice out, and the marina certainly had a very busy opening season. And then going towards where I think right now we're still booked out to August. Um, but it is kind of interesting to see that the, the bookings kind of pretty much stop on August 28th as far as transients. I mean, um, so it's just interesting being from Florida with the culturally as far as the waterways and stuff. But um, <clears throat> we'll, get cool. the, we'll get the loopers in September. Yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. Good. I just I want, I want to hear that because we need yeah, more. We so. <laughs> um but moving forward, uh, marketing sales. So I, I did include the river on this. So we had uh, about 167 included as far as total slips. Uh, for the marina, we had a few that came in mid-season. So I did uh, go to council and got approved for half-season rates, uh, no electric for transient uh, rates, and then monthly rates. So my monthly rates, just so you guys are aware, so I know it's a little different than if it's been done previously. I do not believe that monthly rates should be like a quarter of the price of what the whole thing is. Right. I believe it's the same thing as renting. If you rent an apartment, you're going to pay more money for your monthly or for a rent, for, excuse me, for a month. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I did it. But I went, I did try to make it fair. I made it 20% less than if you're going on a transient, paying for just a transient daily fee. So I did uh, try and take that into account. <clears throat> we had probably about six people sign up for the half season. I certainly had a couple inquiries just in general about that and um, I did uh, quite literally just split that in half from if it was a thousand then it's 500 like our non-electric that's what it is um, and uh, a lot a lot of good inquiries for there I think that um, <clears throat> we only have a few no electrics uh, electric ones and let's see here I had one other talking point for that um, and the <clears throat> well, I just want to make sure you guys were updated on my, my rate change. But for the fuel, I thought was interesting. So the city bought X amount beforehand pre-fuel, which was really helpful for us uh, not having to, we don't have to change the fuel prices every week because it's just not going to change. Um, but now, uh, which is good and, and bad, but good most of all, I didn't think that we would surpass 
whatever the number was, X amount of number in sales uh, for what the pre-cost was. And we did that in early July, I believe I had it in there, early July, which was great. Now, the only downside of that is I have to watch it every time we get a delivery. So I did have an increase in gas as far as our price, not much. I think it's 20 cents more. And then also an increase in diesel um, because our, our at cost is higher than 20 cents more. What up? Yes. Yeah, I believe it went 20. I think it was 20 for both. Yeah. Um, but. <clears throat> so, uh, so yes. Nick, I don't want to interrupt, but, but, but I am. Uh, so just an observation. I do know of a gentleman who spent a lot of time with a large boat who uh, had very high fuel costs on diesel and actually bought futures at good moments on the market. So we're a big enough buyer that you just might might want to have uh, somebody from the city go back and check to see the feasibility of that. So when the price is low in the oil and in the gas and diesel market, you actually can buy futures. So rather than buying, locking in, loading it up, you've got the right to buy at that price. Just Okay. Just something, an observation from experience. Uh, I haven't bought it. I, I don't have a boat that requires that. Uh, so, but but just a, a comment that it, we're a big enough buyer, you may want to check it. Perfect. No, no, and I appreciate it. I think that's similar to what the airports do as well. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Um, and I'll dive right in as to our maintenance and operations. So the... Docs certainly need some help, and I think everyone in this room is aware of that, just in a general sense, as far as the construction. Um, so my idea, and you know, working with my doc hands, was to, you know, try and try and provide an appearance that was more appealing for uh, the tenants and for the transients. And I think overall, it was successful. So we did the, uh, we power washed all the dock. Well, what we could um, for the docks. It's certainly a time-consuming process, um, but it does make it you know, look a little more classier for, uh, you know, just any marina in general. And I think probably the, the biggest one, which we did get out before the boat race, which was great, was uh, that G-Dock. So that, my understanding is that has been there for a couple, maybe at least two years, uh, I'm assuming. Um, but we were able to get a, a good price to get that removed, and it was approved, excuse me, approved to get that removed. And that was done probably about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago now. Um, but uh, I'll openly say it, what an eyesore, and I am very happy that that is gone. And I'm sure, actually I know for a fact that Mike is. Um, <laughs> so we are, uh, that, was, that was good news for that. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, <clears throat> and I think uh, as far as my maintenance moving forward, like we, we, as you guys know, the city runs the river slips as well. Um, that part is, not so much as far as getting on the docks with the fallen trees and just the debris. Definitely, it is a lot to have my guys go over there because they take the boat over there and I try to get them over there at least once or twice a week um, because that having those logs and some of them are quite literally trees in the water um, just will absolutely destroy those docks along with the boats as well. Um, so we're doing our best to make sure that we get over there and uh, tenants sometimes are very helpful on the river. They call me, let me know, and we try to get over there immediately uh, and remove that uh, for them. And then, uh, so that was uh, one, one point of in, in, interest as well. And, you know, our cleansiness, going as far as the amenities, uh, having the captain's lounge, having those restrooms, and even the, the public, well, public ones outside, and just the overall appearance, it's for me, it's always been about making, trying to make it a clean environment. Uh, with the transients coming in, I, I realized that for the marina, we're, we're much different than last year and, you know, not offering as much uh, amenity-wise. So if we're not at a point where we can offer that, we need to be making up for it in a different fashion. And that would be providing a quality people, somewhere where you want to walk in and not see toilet paper and what have you on the floor. Um, so we, we've made... I think overall we've done a pretty good job with that. There's been a couple weekends where perhaps we got backed up, backed up on that, but overall I think we've we've done a good job. Um, <clears throat> amenities. Uh, I know we touched base on this last uh, meeting. I did get the approval as far as being able to rent that ice cream stand. Unfortunately, it didn't 
uh, fruitcake to anything. It's something to look at, at again for, for next year. So hopefully we can, we can find a suitable vendor. We did get the vending machine that was put outside the marina and it didn't, <clears throat> the original plan was to have four, two inside, two outside. And uh, unfortunately it's, did not work out towards four. So it's just the one with soda machine that's inside. Uh, again, something to look at next year. Uh, I would like that to be enhanced the way that it was supposed to be this year uh, with the outside inside with drinks and, and uh, excuse me, snacks as well. Um, <clears throat> and customer feedback based on tenants and then also based on, you know, with the transient season uh, picking up, certainly discussing, uh, excuse me, discussion and not having that pool. Um, I know that even though it's on our website and, and you know, we, we've certainly been open as far as not having that pool, uh, we did still get quite a few trains that came in and were, were frustrated uh, to not have that and with the bar upstairs and some other, you know, some of these other amenities that they weren't aware of. And, you know, I, I would take it that they came in under what they would believe as false pretenses, even though we weren't necessarily hiding that um, and uh, disappointed that that wasn't there. But um, <clears throat> beyond that, uh, most of the feedback I would say was, was positive it was for, for the staff. I think the staff is doing a, a great job as well. Um, Doc hands as far as the customer service and, being willing to, uh, you know, at times stay late or pump fuel or help help these guys when they need it, and uh, you know, it's 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 good to see that they're they you know have the passion to try and you know provide that marina what what it needs to be uh, the same way that I want to as well. Um, <clears throat> improvements for the marina, uh, I did touch on that power washing a little bit uh, earlier, and then we had those two more grills that uh, the marina purchased, and we put those out there, and it is. Nice to see, you know, all the tenants kind of come together or trains, whatever, what have you, and uh, all out there grilling and using all four grills at once. Um, we took the umbrellas from the pool because you really can't put anything else down there, uh, you know, made stands for them and put them up there. So uh, they have a little bit of shade there as well uh, when, when they're making their dinners and stuff. Um, <clears throat> improvements on my side. So going into the marina management, I think the Probably the biggest feedback that I've gotten is the particular program that we're using um, for the marina. Uh, and, and it's something that, you know, I'm looking into for this off season as far as the management program. Um, I think that I think that it needs to be improved next year. It's been very difficult for my staff or the transients for uh, some of the tenants are willing to tell you difficult for them as well. Um, just managing through that. So it's something that we're ac actively seeking to improve for next year. Um, and then uh, just so, you know, we're, we're openly aware it's not, it's not a program that we want to change every year because um, I know it is frustrating for everyone to have to go through that, uh, myself included. So it is something that we're looking into for the long term, not just to have it for one year and then uh, move forward to a different one again. <clears throat> And just touching on safety a bit, uh, I know we, we removed that uh, G-Doc and we did put the, we were able to put those ladders out. I know we mentioned that last time. Uh, the only unfortunate part was someone stole one of our ladders, um, but we still have the, you know, the, the other four out there. I know, the other four out there for now. Um, and uh, I did want to note that we did have uh, one incident uh, as far as uh, a boat that bumped into another boat, but you know, we, it was both the tenants and they came together and we were able to resolve that. I, I assisted and beyond that, there hasn't been any similar issues like that at the marina. So, I'm sorry, I thought that was silent. Questions for Nick? Sure. Outdoor storage? I'm sorry. Have you done anything yet with winter storage? Uh, we have a potential vendor. Um, the idea would be for this individual to, he would rent the lot uh, from us and he would essentially manage everything for the winter storage. Um, it is not um, out there right now, I'm waiting on a few, it is not technically a yes now because I am waiting on documents on my end in order to be able to proceed for that from, from this particular vendor. Once I have that, 
I will openly point every single person that needs it in the correct direction. Because there, in the last week or so, there was a rumor going along that that had been settled and that we were able to put our boats up there. And I said, I didn't see anything. Um, I would have hoped that we would have been notified if something like that really Yeah, happened. and uh, I, absolutely. I certainly understand you uh, on that one, Cap. And, and when I have an official notice, I will I will certainly let you guys know. I do know that we are, we are certainly actively speaking with this vendor, but I, I am not going to... Um, you know, respectfully, so going to send out an email and tell you guys that we have them, and then it turns out to be not the answer that we all want, and then my email is blowing up on my phone, and everyone hates me. <laughs> Nick, are you still waiting on the Wait, is it? Go ahead. Hmm? Sorry. Please. It's the same topic, and then, so if it's the same topic? Oh, well, no, it's a different topic. Okay, then oh, I think I'm we got okay, about the, the, same st topic. the storage. It, if I recall, it was to we'll prevent insurance issue getting the proper paper, paperwork through. If that's what. Uh, yeah. Is. So it's the it's the insurance that we're waiting for, and then uh, the city is doing uh, working. I spoke with this vendor to, uh, today as far as what he needs from us, right? So what are the rules going to be as far as what he can do? And um, so I, I think that you might see some more of that fruit date a little bit more next week. Uh, and I know we we're, we're, we're pushing getting so and late in the season that, yeah. that uh, you know we. Hate that just keeps stringing people along, not knowing. And you know, the longer we wait, the less customers he's going to have. Sure. If he wants to operate this, so. Um, yeah, and it's. Um, I'm going to interrupt and just interject from on a positive side, though, from the city's perspective. The city moved from resolve it on your own to if we can work it out. Right. Yeah. That under appropriate terms that the city's um, trying to facilitate it with land availability. So that's different from where we were at before. And, and it's a positive thing. So you're still trying to work through some things with the vendor though. Yes, yeah, and um, you know, I, I sent him what I had for the previous, you know, winter storage, so he's trying to get an idea of, you know, what, what services were provided for you know for, for winter storage right. um so he's certainly actively working on that portion as well okay um and with the week that we have coming up uh it, it will not uh i don't imagine that you would hear something back you know certainly not this week or the end of this week given the race that we have mm -hmm. hopefully next week hopefully okay again things are not within your control and we recognize that uh but uh, um okay Go ahead, Terry. To, to finish off on that, the problem is, like, there's a bunch of us that are waiting on this, but we started calling around. You can't get into Manitowoc anymore. You can't get into Port Washington anymore. There's waiting lines already at those places for indoor storage. So we're kind of put out in the dark right now of nothing and, because we're kind of hanging on. And I'm way more optimistic than Nick is, but I also don't have any money in the, at stake on the table for it. But I'm way more optimistic okay. that, that, that something will come forward. I hope so, too. Because, I, it, and, like I said, both yeah. Port Washington and Manitowoc, which is our closest to, have a waiting list. So, so, Terry, we may pull you in to have you help uh, <laughs> bring this to fruition. But, but I know Nick has been working really hard on it. Um, I know I've been working really hard on it. And, and we've, we're close. Okay. The other thing is fuel, I think it was either last year or the year before, you now have a monopoly on fuel. The wharf does not sell any fuel anymore, and they were the only place that you could get fuel. Uh, so you can double the price? Yeah. You, well, <laughs> let me know, though, so I can fill my boat, <laughs> then double the price. Um, so, you know, it, 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 your guys do a great job. There. Anytime we come in, contact somebody, they're right down there. Saturday, four of us helped him get that big log that was right in front of the, the, the fuel dock. Yeah, in front of the, the, the fuel tree. dock. Yeah, yeah my, a couple guys off my boat jumped off and helped your guy pull that up. Um, so the fuel costs, you should see staying relatively even or more because the wharf, and I've talked to both Grace and Jeff, and they're not going back into that at all. Um, so that's that's done with fixing the dock. My dock sits like this. Take a look at it when you walk by next time. My dock is sitting like this. I don't know why, but it's. And if you jump on it to get off the boat, it goes. 
No, it, it's a, uh, and that's a good job. It's a good. Um, I'm 70 years old, so I make my sons jump off. <laughs> yeah, so we did go out and for trying for the off season. I do have a record of all, and it's quite a few of those finger peers, including yours, sir, um, that need to be adjusted or at least looked at, to say the least, uh, in the off season as well. But your staff is doing a great job. They've been very helpful. Um, if they saw us come, even coming up to our dock, if one of them's out there, they'll come out and pose to help tie off the boat and everything. So it's been great. And I just want to add a couple things. As I took credit for working hard, Eric back there has worked on that winter storage too. So thank you, Eric, for, for the stuff that you've been doing as well. Um, okay, a couple things. Just do you have a rough guess of year over year comparison of marina seasonal slips? I see 167, and I recall, and a year it was 160, but we've, we're adding river now and not, you know, so just a, You're probably a looking punch. At, yeah, so probably about 128 in okay. the marina. Okay. Um, there are probably about six or seven that added on from our this last meeting. Okay, and then hope for next year, just like you're hoping to increase, bump that up by. Speculative. Okay, that's a uh, bad yeah, question. So it, no, no, it's okay. Yeah, I, you know, it is certainly my plan to increase that, but I, you know, I, I think for me as a manager, what I'm looking at is, okay, so I want to increase it, but how do I do that? Um, you know, if, if we're not getting, not doing the pool or whatever, the bar, whatever, if we're not doing that, you know, how can I do that? So my one thought process for me, and this is, you know, just my thought process here, but um, to rent the, where the ship store used to be, maybe to not necessarily West Spring, but someone that can provide boat uh, parts, boat facilities. You know, if we don't, and, you know, doing something similar to that, uh, working with potentially some of the local vendors that we have in Sheboygan um, and trying to, I can't really give you a capacity because I just don't know that answer yet, but, you know, maybe providing something like that. So if we're here, then we can so someone met work X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, uh, working locally with some people okay. as well. And then your employment levels, you feel good with them? I know earlier on, you're having time, a hard time getting enough people. Do you feel like you, you've been able to get that at a level you like right now? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I don't think that any department in, um, ever is gonna tell you that, I don't, you know, we certainly you've don't need extra any more people. guys. Right, 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 no, no. no. <laughs> um, you know, right. I think that we're able to, to manage with what we have. And, you know, I think the crew that we have here is certainly willing to go that extra mile, whether we're quote unquote short staffed or overstaffed, what have you. Um, so I think a lot of it has to do with the motivation of the employees that you want, including myself. Yeah. And then uh, another topic on pulling trees or logs or whatever out. I know there's a, always a lot of floating debris in, in the past. I think DPW folks have, have you know, really done that too. So I don't know if they're doing that alongside you yes, or so, if you're, okay. Yeah, they've been really helpful. Uh, I, I believe it was Tim's department as well. So we'll put them in, you know, X location that, you know, that they want it. And then they'll either come up, chop it up or do what have you. And, and they'll help us. Because ultimately those are Tim's trees that you're taking care of. So <laughs> they're not necessarily, they, they might be, they might be from Keel for all of <laughs> <laughs> They're well watered. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have questions? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yes, please. Um, I had noticed that the um, launch ramp income was so much lower than last year. And of course, the fishing earlier in the season was absolutely outstanding in Sheboygan. Do you have any feeling? I know that we had some problems with the, with the automatic system for a while. Uh, <coughs> why that is down so much? Um, He's down by what, $10,000? Yes. Uh, I would. Probably may potentially say just being on the system and that transition as far as that particular system, because I know it was, in my understanding, it was a good season for fishing. Um, for yeah, most, of, most of the season. That, yes. that are, that are glad to try to grab it. Now, in the past, of course, we were selling passes in the store. Uh, I think we're relying strictly on the kiosk. And is that part of it, the issue? So it is uh, no longer with the kiosk. So it's just on that, uh, the Hagar program. So they oh, would, the yes. Okay. So I wonder, are, are, is it being placed that people aren't buying passes or people are just aren't buying it and nobody's checking yeah. on it? Hey, Gov, the, word, the word's out there that because you got to get it online, if you don't get it online, just go do it and nobody's going to tell check you. That's the word out. In the, oh, so that word is out. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, that's good to know. When we're to... talking about, hey, Gov, I, I, I thought even that some of the city departments aren't using HeyGov because it's so difficult to work with people trying to reserve uh, park pavilions and things of that nature. Because the parking lots are full. You know, yeah. I don't see it. I don't see uh, it. Mr. Uh, Chair. And I don't see the redo. Yeah. Rebecca? Just as a, a point of order, I'm not sure about the actual Roberts rules here, but I do have to jump off here kind of soon. So I don't know if there's any other action items or something that we need to get to for Maywood or the forestry department? Just reports. Uh, it looks like okay. it's just reports, yes. Okay, well, I'm going to, I have to jump off, gang, and uh, this has been really interesting. Sounds like good things are happening at the marina, but I, I do appreciate the flexibility I'm meeting uh, remotely. And before I jump off, Laura is asking online, what is the status of the pool moving forward it is an eyesore as it stands, and I will let you duke that out. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so just a just an observation that we need to make sure that we're not losing revenue because people are not paying. So and I know Nick, you had yeah, mentioned that you're looking at some different software things and and other other aspects, but. At, at some point, it has to be more than just software solutions. And unfortunately, but realistically, it may require enforcement. I just, I don't want to lose $50,000 of profitability because, uh, or, or income to the city because people are deciding that they don't have to pay. And, uh, you know, we want good citizens here who are paying their bills. Um, go ahead, Dean. How is that? How was it? How is it police and how was it police in the past as far as that point goes? The marina police, the marina do, operation do they, police. They go around and do, do they go around to write a ticket or how, how, how would it, oh, what, what happened exactly? They, what, they discovered that they did not have a pass. I think they first got a warning, like a warning thing. But yeah, I think either the security or somebody from the marina every morning will go through and you know, you're supposed to have a sticker on your car or on your trailer. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't seen, you'd get this notice saying, you know, you need to do this or blah, blah, blah. Um, and we had 24 hours security mm -hmm. in the past. So we had someone. There. I'll do it on my are, way home from work if I need to. But. These are yacht owners that won't pay? No, no, no. no, no the okay. It's these the lawn trap. This is the, the launching trap. from the, the, from the ramp trap. going out fishing. Okay. Not, well, not, the not, other issue is tr transients that come in when the marina is closed. Correct. We're losing revenue there too. The river is probably the worst for that. Is it? Um, they come in and I know for a fact. And the word is probably because I've been told about too. it several times. And and, um, and so one of my observations is that as and this is a weird twisted thing, but as a overnight park we have the same statutory protections as theft from a hotel uh, or innkeeper. Um, and I, so we can talk offline later about that, but frankly, we, that's a misdemeanor. It's also enforceable with penalty clauses. And were we to go in that direction, the city would actually make money on it. You but know. we would first warn them, you know, just Why? just get it, getting the information back out in the community no. that we're starting to watch it. We'll okay. take care of Correct. it. Correct. Correct. I don't have, have a problem with the public, but I'm not thinking that any transient who's stopping in Sheboygan should get a free pass. And I, I love transient stopping yeah. in Sheboygan, but pay your bills, right? right? Okay. Sorry, but we can talk offline about different ideas of different directions to go. But, you know, next season, I think we want to make it's sure disgusting. people are paying their bills. Um, okay. Anything else on the marina? Did you want to address that question? No. Okay, we're not going to. Yeah. Isn't there anything no. we can say? Right. No, I, 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 I think there's, there's some things that are matters that we can attend to directly, operationally, and there's matters okay. that, uh, that are long-term planning and our open question marks and and I think it's best to to um, let the let the planning process proceed without trying to interject our commission into the middle of a, a planning process I've tried to keep us a little bit away from the Smith group 
turf um, so that community planning can go ahead. And this is not an open forum session. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I didn't want to add that part, but okay. <laughs> um, Got it. but that's fine. Uh, okay. Um, May would report. Thank God. We've been talking about the marina a long time. I know. <laughs> Andrew's not here tonight, so I'm just going to let you uh, probably read it or, yes. or read it at your leisure. And we'll go right to the forestry if that's yeah, okay yeah. with you. Yeah, it was a great report, by the way, by Kendra. I, I did read it. It's a nice report. Okay, Tim. Yeah, forestry. So I just put up there the numbers we're at this year. Um, we've been really focused on stumps. Uh, pretty much as soon as we got done planting trees in the spring, we started stump grinding um, with two guys every every day. That's you know it's not raining. So in the past we've had a four guy four man crew doing it, and that kind of then we kind of lost out on other opportunities. So something new this year with only two guys and smaller equipment, but we're still we're substantially doing a lot of stumps. So we still have a lot to do. Um, but uh, I am optimistic that uh, we're going to get caught up, you know, within the next, I can't say we'll be done this year, but we're, we're going to get in there. Uh, oh. Ash treatments are, are going well. We have one more day, uh, probably this Thursday, we'll be finished up with those um, for the year. Tree planting will happen in October. So the planning for that will happen soon. Uh, we have about 400 trees to plant yet this fall. Uh, tree removals are doing well. We're, we're, we have started quite a few out there, but we are you know, focused on the worst ones first and, 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 and working on those. Um, pruning, I wish our pruning number was higher uh, with all the other things we're doing. Pruning should be higher, but um, it, it kind of is what it is. And hopefully we'll get caught up in the winter when we have another crew to help with that. Uh, you can see the branches down number 270. That was a direct result of the storm we had in June, which is a lot of what that other page, the rest of the page shows. Um, but yeah, that number, nor like last year at this time, that number was probably like 40. Um, so the storm was pretty significant. And before I get to the storm, we're also working on a urban forestry grant, which we were awarded, which began in March. And that kind of covered some tree removals, some ash injections and some, some new website updates slash postcards that we're designing to better inform the public. So that stuff is all happening and, and on track to finish this year. Um, and then we had this big, I can jump into the storm. That's kind of the last thing to talk about. So June 25th, we had a big wind event. Uh, there was, we recorded 165 trees with significant branches down. So um, little branches like the size of my arm or, or smaller in diameter, we didn't really keep track of. But anything bigger than that, we, we did keep track of. Um, and then those are in green. You can see they're kind of scattered throughout the whole city, uh, those trees that were affected. Uh, five trees in purple, we, re we hired out for removal right away. They were some of the more challenging ones. We had this initial storm, there was, it was a mess all over. So we had a contractor do a couple of these trees on houses, trees on cars, helped us out with those. Um, six of them we did ourselves. And there still remains 24 trees that need removal. Those are in orange. Those are going to be contracted out. They, they've been awarded to a contractor. They're going to do those within the next month or so. Uh, so those are trees that were just significantly damaged enough that they needed removal, but they you know, didn't need it immediately. Uh, and because of those being removed and the ones we removed ourselves, there's, there's still going to be those 30-ish stumps out there. Those are also going to be contracted out this fall. And that's all going to be covered under this catastrophic storm grant that the governor, the governor uh, declared um, catastrophic storm, not mostly because of Sheboygan, but because of there we had some tornadoes in other parts of the state. So it just so happened that the, the wind event we had here in Sheboygan was in the same time frame as these other major events. So we qualified for this opportunity through the DNR. So I've applied for that. Uh, we will get awarded it at the exact dollar amount is to be determined, but the max we can get is 50,000. But um, anyway, anyway, that was a pretty positive thing. We, we had this event. It definitely took staff time away from us. And because of this opportunity with the storm grant, now we can get some of this work done for us, uh, funded by the DNR. So uh, that's, the, that's the update.
Um, the, the trees in Sheboygan are looking fabulous because of all the rain. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of rain in the beginning, but my, the trees are beautiful. Yeah, yeah you know, I- Tree city. I do have, I haven't been through the whole city yet. I'm, I'm going through and looking at our new plantings that we did this spring. And initially, I'm maybe halfway through. Initially, the numbers have been significantly better than years prior because I think all that rain we had, because we haven't been able to supply someone to water those trees in, in years past or even this year. Uh, and due to the amount of rain, I think when, when I'm done with the city, I'll have a better number. That I can that I can share and maybe have some. My basement is finally dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Jim, I, you had a you had a program before about having neighbors uh, water the trees to help yeah. out and whatever. Do you still are you still doing that? Where if you if you plant a tree, you you ask somebody to take care of watering it. Great question. So part of the the DNR we we did have we do have right now we we've been using door hangers when we plant a tree yeah. and kind of it tells them hey. The opportunity is there for you to to water the tree and this is if you want to do it this is what you do yeah and i would say the initial response was mostly people were like i don't want to deal with that but um but there's some people do love it and they want to take it on but we're, what we're transitioning to now as part of this other grant we're going to switch over to a postcard which will be easier to, to get in the people's hands i think yeah um and it'll direct us to our website and we're working on what, what i'm calling like a watering pledge yeah where people can sign up and, and they'll actually have a map where they can pick the tree that they're gonna water which ideally probably will be the one in front of their house yeah right. but then but then others will be able to see which ones are available and, and you know so tree, that's yeah so it's idea. it's a new initiative we're gonna try and the way I feel about it is if they go through the effort to go on the website and pick the tree and sign up for it yeah it allows us to take that off of our own watering list which we're yes we're short-staffed and or sh we haven't been able to maintain our own appropriately, yeah. but at least this will help us know which ones not to water. Yeah. So yeah, that's going to be part of this. Um, but Tim, yeah. aren't all the trees in front of somebody's house or business? Well, some houses, they're, you know, maybe nobody's living there. Maybe it's like a- It's a rental. Maybe. It's, so there are a bunch of trees along, uh, along Broughton Drive that were just beautifully planted, just, mm -hmm south of michigan avenue right. they're gorgeous trees but that's not near anybody's yeah, house yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes it's a but uh, i would totally sponsor one of those trees sign them up yep. yeah yeah, yep. yeah bring your buckets well, of water totally if, you're, if you're there for one as, I, as i'm going seven. past and giving tickets <laughs> out to people who are not well, paying their okay, yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> sign up for three get four extra for free <laughs> <laughs> how do you get a tree planted in front of you we still have the requested tree on the DPW website. We're still utilizing, and and actually, a, a goal would also to be to change that over on the website to be where they could they could pick a location on a map where they'd like to see a tree. It would save me a step of email and me putting it on the map versus they could just put it there and then I could either approve or or, or, or edit. So we're working on that. I will, I will let them. Know. Okay. Anything else for Tim? Otherwise, one thing, one thing I have a I have a neighbor who's he's had got a prosthetic prosthetic leg. Now he's in a wheelchair because he broke his hip, and he always goes down to the overlook, which is like two blocks from the house. He can't go far, but he can still go. And he's asked why the overlook you can't look over <laughs> <laughs> because it's getting pretty bad. It's, what's getting pretty bad? you can't. It's almost all so overgrown you can't even see the lake from the old lake. Lake. And it's a steep hill there. I know it's hard to trim and hard to maintain. So but yeah, we'll have to take a look at it. Right. Yeah, I know it's a looks like a real Oh the tree look. Okay. If yeah. nothing else, I have one quick matter that I need to address and it's important for me to address it. And I have a statement I want to read, so I'm going to pass the theoretical virtual gavel over to our vice chair, Mike, because I can't read the statement and be chair at the same time. I received a telephone call yesterday afternoon at 2.47, during which I was threatened in connection with the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission and my pursuit of the best interests of the city of Sheboygan. 
Please know that I will not be intimidated from continuing to look out for the best interests of the city as a Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioner. I've also been informed that city employees have recently been harassed. There is no place for this, and I expect us to conduct ourselves professionally and with kindness, particularly to the city employees who assist us. I'm not going to say anything further on this matter. Amen. Great. Have you forwarded that to them? No, it's not necessary to do so. Um, okay, uh, if nothing else, then we have our next meeting scheduled uh, on November 5th. Uh, and uh, I will take a motion. A motion. 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 Is there a second? Sure. Yes. And a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.